Hello Libra, thank you for joining me for your weekly forecast for week commencing the 8th of October, a week which features a new moon in your sign, a wonderful opportunity to recast your identity in a more dynamic way, give yourself a, a makeover, or galvanise yourself into action when it comes to a key aim or objective. Venus, the planet of love and of course of money, your ruler does, however, continue to track backwards in your sector of resources and will do so through to the end of this month. Care, therefore, is going to be needed around these. And Venus is clashing with Mars. Now, obviously, this duo uh, govern relating. Uh, your ruler, Venus, in terms of the more feminine side, the more receptive side of relating, and Mars in the more assertive side. Mars is no longer being blighted by Uranus, and is in a fine uh, transit which can help you to express your talents and also gives you more willpower and can also up your sex appeal, there's no doubt about it. But Venus is in a very sultry area. Is there someone you're attracted to? It's possible. This person may be free and available. If there is someone who's attracting your attention, perhaps just don't try too hard to make that impression upon them. But going back to those aims that you have, with the sun's help, these have been really building up since the last 10 days of September and throughout the start of this month too. But this new moon clashes with Pluto, and Pluto's in your sector of emotions, along with the stern and sobering energy of Saturn. So whatever you want to achieve this week, it's important that it works for you but also for the people dear to you if you're kind of forcing something that goes against the will of others to the point that it creates a bit of unhappiness then that can create some waves now generally you're someone who bends over backwards to make sure that you're pleasing other people and it's good that you're being more single-minded at this time and this aspect doesn't mean to say you shouldn't stick to your uh, your plan but it does mean that where you deploy your plan needs to be uh, sensitive and discussions need to take place that allow people to ventilate how they feel too. But you could be a bit more impatient if there is someone around you, say a family member, parents, potentially a, a, a more nurturing figure normally. This person may want you to stick with the status quo which suits them, not you. So critical point along the path of you uh, really moving into your own power is reached and there could be a bit of a block, a roadblock that you need to work your way through, but it's not impossible. In fact, Mercury moves midweek into Scorpio, which can help you grapple with any financial issues in a clearer minded way and then forges a great angle to Saturn, also in that fourth solar house. So you could end the week actually putting together your plan in a very structured, well thought out and workable way, but it's about bringing the people along with you. But clearly, if there is someone who just doesn't get you and is not particularly bothered about getting you, it's all about their needs. You may feel it's time you really have to stick up for what defines you and what you want. It's been a real pleasure being with you. Thank you for joining me. Good luck and goodbye for now. Hello Libra, thank you for joining me for your monthly forecast for October. The Sun and Mercury begin this month in your zodiac sign. This gives you an awesome opportunity to take a firmer grip on your life direction. Your focus very often is on balancing your needs with those of the people that you care about. You can be the arch diplomat. But also, you're a cardinal sign, which gives you real power. That's a, one of the qualities. Of course, you're also an air sign, so you're an ace communicator too. So at the start of this month, the challenge for you is to try to raise your profile, take your plans, the things that are important to you, more seriously. Now, there is on the second, a quarter moon, in the sign of cancer. Your emotions are going to be closer to the surface. And it may seem that someone in a position of influence, perhaps 
a, a government and governmental agency that you have to interact with, a boss, an organisation, a job, someone who works for you. It could be an older relative or perhaps someone in a local organisation that's dear to your heart. They may try to resist this more independent, single-minded approach that you're showing. Then, of course, your ruling planet is Venus. It gives you that lovely appreciation of class, taste, and it is going to go into retrograde on the 5th in the sign of Scorpio, which is deep and passionate. Your attitude to sensuality and intimacy is going to come under the astral microscope through to the end of the month, but I think it could be finances that may need rethinking too, because Venus could slow this part of your life down or at least see you rethinking something that in the past had been something you automatically wanted to do. And it may come down to just how much you're enjoying something, how much pleasure you get. Because remember, Venus is the planet of sublime pleasure. So some rethinking perhaps is set to go on there. But Venus is also squaring up to Mars in the first two weeks of this month. Now, Venus and Mars across the second and the fifth house axis points towards exuberance. It points towards generosity. It points to lustiness. So you could find yourself drawn towards someone but not understand what their appeal is. Maybe it's working at a very deep, almost very, very hidden, subconscious and sexual level. Or it could be someone that you're constantly kind and generous to that has become a relationship that you're not enjoying quite so much. In general, your affections should be bestowed carefully in the first two weeks of this month. The good news, however, is that Mars is no longer in a sharp right angle with Uranus, which had been the case since the second week of May through to pretty well the end of September. Now, that was even more complex in some ways because there was a clash between your desire to express your individuality, your creativity, your flair, to get the things that make you feel happy in life against the things that you were really committed to. And that may have seen you, again, not quite sure of following the same pattern of being the giver. But all this giving stuff is really going to come up to the fore on the back of the new moon in your sign on the 9th. Ordinarily, a new moon is wonderful to launch things, to raise your profile, give yourself a glamorous makeover, to think about yourself in a more dynamic way. And this one still can be. However, it is compromised by the dreamy, distorting energy of Neptune, which has really been challenging you since 2012 because that part of you that can be a giver has really been pulled even more into the open by Neptune's self-sacrificing nature. This is the part of your horoscope, the sixth house, is where we do our best for others. And Neptune is very sympathetic. But are you being so caring and sympathetic to others that you're losing track of what's good for you, the individual? Furthermore, family and emotional pressures have really been strong over the last few years, particularly from 2008. And then, of course, this year, Saturn moved the end of well, December the 20th, 2017, into the fourth solar house, into Capricorn. And the two are still highly active in this area. However, Capricorn is, or Saturn in Capricorn, is its home zone. And this can be demanding. It could be that you're rebuilding your home in some way, making some fundamental changes to where you live, or the building blocks inside your emotions or your family relationships are going through quite a seismic shift. And this new moon is going to bring all this to the open because it squares up to Pluto. Pluto is about power, but it's also about hidden stuff. It could be about your desire to have power. It could be about someone else's. But if someone always seems to assume that they know what's best for you, this may be the point when you say no more. And that's going to last for a month, that overlay image, energy. The actual aspect lasts for the following week from the 9th. And across those days, particularly, there's going to be greater intensity. However, on the 16th, the sector or the, the sign of Capricorn is reinforced even more by another quarter moon. But this time for you, it's maybe you who's going to be questioning some of your motives around your emotional situation. 
or maybe someone close to you doesn't seem very supportive or nurturing or doesn't get how you feel about some of the people that you feel are challenging, perhaps in your family. The family is very much about the fourth house. Or perhaps you're just having a lot of big thinking about what happened to you when you were a kid. The messages that were put into you as, uh, by your parents and how that shaped you. Are you still just routinely following those or are you set to challenge them? It's all up in the air, isn't it? It's a fascinating month, Libra. Your potential desire to be very equitable to everyone is going to be challenged, I feel. You're going to have to decide what you believe in and stand for it more than ever. And then the sun moves on the 23rd into Scorpio. It won't be back to your sign for 11 months. But on the 10th, Mercury moved into this area. So you do have an opportunity to battle back against some of the more restrictive energies of Venus's retrograde. But I do feel that Mercury helps you to think, the sun helps you... The sun basically is the enabler, isn't it? It's very much about sheer energy. It's very much about making things happen. So you could find yourself quite motivated to improve your lot in the last 10 days of this month, but there is still some highly exciting energies that are going to bubble to the fore because Venus has reversed so much back that it meets up with the sun and we have a conjunction. Now, that could point towards a bit of a financial stroke of luck, to be quite honest. And with Uranus in opposition on the other side of the heavens to both Venus and the Sun, and then the full moon on the 26th connecting with Uranus in the sign of Taurus, your brilliance, your ability to think outside the box, being an air sign as you are, to be innovative, to be challenging, to see the direction of travel around technology, new ways of doing things, to break out of what other people expect, to be more of a trendsetter than a follower, can definitely come to the fore. But equally, you may decide that you want to spend some money, whatever the consequences, because Uranus is very much about being spontaneous in this kind of situation. Or it may be someone you encounter has such an aura about them, such a magnetic vibe, that you just cannot resist them. It's entirely possible, all of this stuff, hugely exciting. But the other thing is that when these uh, three, well, the Sun, the Luminary, Venus, the planet, and Uranus, the planet, go into this opposition, they are dissected across uh, the axis of Leo and Aquarius by the North and South nodes. This is the, the dragon's heads, if you like. And in terms of the North node, that's very much about a Jupiterian influence. It's like a mini Jupiter. It's about uh, your point of destiny. It's about your possibilities. And that, since the 10th of May 2017, has been in Leo. Brilliant to network, connect, build new alliances, clear out the ones that are no longer working. But we have a grand fixed cross that occurs right on that full moon. I do think this is going to be hugely important for all sorts of things in the world at large. Libra and energy is very much about reasonability. It's about weighing up all the different sides of an argument or situation, trying to understand that with responsibility, uh, sorry, with freedom comes responsibility. It's not just about doing what we want. But I think something that's become too intolerable for you around a compromise which you're just not enjoying can see you much more outspoken, but it can also bring huge opportunities to act out your desires in a way which you start to get what you want. Visualise it, order it, cosmically order it if you like. And from the last day of the month, Mercury moves into Sagittarius, which is going to see your mind quicksilver sharp, and you can start to really get even more excited about some of the opportunities coming your way. It's great to be a people pleaser. I am. I've got a Libra and Ascendant. Do you know, I think I've spent so much of my life worrying about what other people think. And it's so important to be sensitive to others, to be caring, to be compassionate, to do our bit for society, to be a thoughtful person, but not to the point that it diminishes your individuality. And there are challenges coming from your own emotions, from the family, from where you live, or it could be around a relationship, around what you value, what someone else values. It may be about your ability to manifest new monies, 
or to come to terms with monies that no longer are working for you. But this is a time of opportunity as well. And it's an exciting time and one you should try to grab with both hands. I've really been struggling with the rheumatoid arthritis and I'm so grateful for all the kind messages, suggestions and support. I'm listening to all those natural ones. I'm doing so much. Serepetes, I'm doing turmeric, heated of course. I'm doing ashwagandha tea. I'm, uh, yes, taking fish oil. Um, and cherry is supposed to be very good for us too, taking that. And it isn't working. The rheumatoid arthritis is aggressive. The first drug they put me on hasn't worked. I've had to go on steroids because I was in so much pain. And now if this latest push that I'm doing using CBD oil as well doesn't work, I will have to go on methotrexate, which is a chemo drug. So all your support and warmth has meant so much. I'm so, so grateful. And I wish you all the best for 2018's October. For now, good luck and goodbye. Hello, thank you so much for watching my video. I'd love you to join me at my Horoscope Ace app. You can find this at www.horoscope-ace.com. You can use it through Android, iOS, Apple or Facebook. Check out your Ascendant or your Moon site or download your free birth chart. There's all your favourite videos, plus there are daily, weekly, monthly and yearly horoscopes for general, love, Chinese and Indian astrology. If your passion is tarot, there's my brilliant three card money or love tarot readings too. And it's all there at www.horoscope-ace.com. Thank you.